In any boisterous playground, it's easy for tempers to flare up and anger to spill over. Managing children's anger is a critical skill for all staff. Often it's down to the teaching assistants to sort this out in the heat of the moment, whether in the playground at break times or in the class so the teacher can continue teaching. In this programme, we'll follow Jackie Roberts and Valerie Vassell, two teaching assistants at Kingswood School in South London. They're going to explore some techniques for helping children manage their anger. All behaviour is difficult to deal with because you go in there blind. You can have a child that's hungry. So, of course, if you're hungry, you're going to be angry because you can't think straight. Or maybe they've been fussing and fighting with their siblings or they went to bed late last night. Some children might just not feel like being in school today and display behaviour that is not appropriate for class and TAs. My role is to really remove the child from that class and to try and deal with it. Valerie and Jackie have come to talk to the learning mentor at the school. Um, You're right. Yes. Sarah Harris is experienced in helping children manage their anger and they've come to see if any of her techniques can be adapted for their work as TAs. The carpet is the worst time. Mm. There's prodding on the carpet, there's whispering, especially after play when they've brought in issues from the playground. Yeah. Someone's just suddenly erupted for no apparent reason and then you've got someone crying in the corner. So you've got four things, yeah. four little people, yeah. depending on you to deal with all these issues all at the same time, which is more important and they want justice now. Well, sometimes they don't know how to explain mm. how they're feeling and then I'm finding it difficult to explain to them because I don't know. Often the mistakes I've made when I've been dealing with anger is the language I've been using yeah. with yeah. children as well. You know when you walk into a situation and you assume you know what the problem is before you've actually tried yeah. to find out. Oh, yeah, I've told children this <laughs> and they told the wrong yeah. child off and yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm really sorry. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, yeah. And, yeah. and also it's not about you having to know all about what's going on with the child, it's about them identifying their own feelings and going, well, actually, what do I? What choices do I have to make to to cool down? And you support them. You you like walk alongside them, I suppose, because mm -hmm. I don't think we're mind readers. Anger's healthy because everybody gets angry, and it's no different for children. Children get fed up with each other, and I think if we ask children to restrain from showing that anger, then they start to bottle it up, and that's when you're going to have a big explosion. Anger management, what you're doing is you're allowing children the space to be angry, but you're helping them to channel that anger into something that's going to be a lot more positive. Oh, are you a volcano? volcano? Now this we could definitely have done with Jackie because yes, he was, he was he like, was man, a, he, he was a volcano. Was a volcano. <laughs> 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 oh, no, but we, we didn't the need to The biggest eruption yeah. ever, <laughs> believe me, yeah. I've had time. The three of them are going to look at some of the techniques that Sarah uses to see how they can be adapted for teaching assistants to use in their day-to-day -day work. They will look at three aspects. The physical symptoms of anger, some boundaries for anger management, and different strategies for expressing anger. I've got some pictures here. And on my first picture, what do you think's going on in that picture? The boy's angry with his dad. First, Valerie and Jackie observe Sarah working on a one to one basis with a pupil, exploring the physical symptoms of anger. What are they doing? Can you describe what they're doing and show me? They're going like. My face is really red and I go. Mm. Siobhan is a child who used to have severe anger management problems. Her anger used to manifest itself in the form of shouting at her teacher, um, not listening to adults when they were trying to talk her through her anger, um, getting very wound up in the playground, hitting back at children. Is there anything else about her body that tells you that she's angry? The girl won't let the other girl play with her toys. And she's shouting at the other girl. Can you show me what she's doing with her face? Can you show me? She's shouting, isn't she? Yeah. Is there anything in these pictures that seems familiar to you that you might do that is the same when I, you feel angry? I'm shouting and my face gets red and I'm frowning. Mm. And my 
croissant to my fist. What the children have to do is identify which parts of their body are affected when they feel angry. For instance, some children might get really hot in their face or some children really clench their fists. And children who have difficulty controlling their anger quite often don't um, make the link between, OK, I'm angry and my body physically feels different. We're going to write this on our piece of paper, but we get to add a bit of colour to it. If we were thinking of a hot face, what colour might we think of? Red. Red, yeah. It's really nice for them to have this picture in front of them and they can add colour to it and they can label it of what happens to them when they feel really angry. But when we know how our body feels when we're feeling angry, then we can start to deal with that, can't we? Having watched this session, Valerie and Jackie are going to try and use these techniques with a small group of children from their different classes. Both of them regularly run small circle time groups. They've devised some icebreaker games to start the children thinking about anger in general, before moving on to exploring their own anger and its physical manifestations. So who can tell me first what, what they think anger means? Nisa? When you're not happy with something. When you're not happy with something. Nishka. Anger means when you're like physically, physically sad and not feeling well. Anger means, yeah, when like you're getting mad and you want to punch someone in the face or something. That's what anger means. There's all different kinds of anger, yeah, but the main anger is when you really um, want to beat someone up. Well, I think anger is when you lose your cool and all your emotions have risen to the top like a volcano. Siobhan, when you're angry, show me your facial expressions when you're angry. It's important for children to be able to recognise their anger because if they don't know what's happening to their body and they don't know the link between that and feeling angry, then you can't work with them on strategies they can use to calm themselves down. When I get angry, I explode. When I get angry, I squeeze my hands. When they recognise when I'm angry, then for, say, a child who clenches their fists, if they know that that's what they do when they're angry, then you can teach them to just let go. On this, we're going to label the different parts of the body that will tell us about the way we feel when we're angry. If you were really angry, or anybody in your class was really angry, what do you think some of the rules should be? Um, that they don't f um, fight back, retaliate. Oh, OK, so we could put no fighting. Yeah. Janai is a child I've been working with a while. He's also a child who had difficulty controlling his anger and his anger came in the form of he used to get very upset when he felt an injustice. He felt like somebody had um, told him off or he had been in trouble and it hadn't been him. He would get angry by kicking his chair or getting very upset and crying about what was going on. Is there anything you did with your chair or your table? Oh or? yeah, I banged my chair. When I was pushing my chair back in, I banged it in. So you banged your chair yeah. in. So is there kind of a rule that we might need to put in there? Care for equipment. Care for equipment. So we could treat equipment with care. Anger rules build on the first lesson by children now know what physically happens to them when they feel angry. And by introducing the rules, they know that then there's boundaries to their anger. It doesn't take away from them that they can't feel angry because they know it's okay. But then if they have rules and they need to find strategies to deal with their anger or solutions that keep to the rules. And do you think talking about it helps? Yeah. It does help. It um, brings your stress down. It does, it brings your stress down, doesn't it? Valerie and Jackie get their circle group to come up with some of their own anger rules in pairs. Now we're going to feed back to the group our ideas on anger. So, Janelle. Don't hurt property. Not to slap them up in. Try not to hit. Yeah? Don't hit other people and think about what you're doing. Think about your actions before you do it. Oh, I like that one. Do talk about it. Talk about your feelings. Is that what you want to say, Siobhan? To talk to someone bef before you hurt them. Okay. 
It might be possible for a teacher assistant to refer to the anger rules when they're working with a child who has come into school and you can see that their anger is building and you can see an explosion coming and the rules allow you to be proactive rather than reactive. When they know the rules then you can move on to the solution. Never take, take your actions on anyone. That's marvellous, I love that one because we do that so many times don't we? Mm. Take our anger out and our frustrations out on other people. If we were to come up with some things that happen to us when we're angry that are not the nice things, the things we do when we're angry that are not so nice, what yeah. kind of things would you say? Um, beating someone up. Okay, so beating someone up. The difference between dirty and clean anger comes from either our anger that breaks the rules, which is dirty anger, and anger that keeps the rules, which is clean anger. So examples of dirty anger, they might kick the chairs, or they might punch another child, or they might shout at an adult. And that breaks the rules because they are hurting property and they're hurting other people. If we had to come up with some ways that we could be angry, but we were following the anger rules, what kind of things could we do? Don't fight back. Okay, what could we do instead of fighting back? Um, go to the teacher. Okay. Clean anger might be going for a big run around the playground at lunchtime or talking to their friend about it or 10 deep breaths. So they're things that allow the child to calm down and they also stick to the anger rules as well. Sometimes it's hard to talk about our feelings, but when we write it down, sometimes we can make a little bit of sense of it, can't we? Yeah, the last one could be counting to 10. Oh, counting to 10, fantastic. This session lends itself well to role play to get children to think about managing their own anger. Hey, stupid. Hey, fat pig. Hey, fat head. Get out of my face. Get out of my face. OK, thank you. Now I'm going to choose two children to show us what they could have done. Right, Nathaniel and Janelle. What are you doing? Do I know you? Yes, you do know me. Why was you fighting me last night? I didn't fight you. Well, I want to fight. Well, I don't want to fight. Yeah, well, I do. Well, I don't. Excellent. That's well fantastic. done. And what do you think the best choice you made? I walked away. You walked away. That's absolutely excellent. It's important to give children choices because you involve them in the management of their own behaviour and their own anger. And that's really powerful because if you were to tell them what to do, they're less likely to do it. How, how did it work when you put it into the group situation? Did you find the strategies were useful for you moving from one to one into a group? I found it a lot easier than I actually thought because they fed off each other when it came to um, different ideas and that. And I thought also getting them to role play, which was very good for them, because you know sometimes when you sort of put them on the spot they tend to freeze up, but they really got into their roles, yeah, didn't fantastic. they? Yeah, fantastic. Well. Another thing that I learned was, I'd always said to a child, why are you angry? Yeah. What do you have to How be angry we done about? That? I'm always saying that to them. Mm. But I, I learned today that yeah, it's all right to be angry. It's never why you're angry, no. it's how are we going to be angry. And I learned a lot about those children.